this video we're going to be taking a look at Stassa Lee for the Legacy Collection. She was figured number 23, just after the Imperial Engineer that I reviewed previously on the channel. And personally, I think this is one of the best action figures that came out of the Legacy Collection. Uh, at least the first half of it, that is. Uh, she's a very detailed action figure and a lot of details on her that we've never really seen on any other action figures before, quite frankly. At least, uh, not too frequently, that is. And I'll get into that a little bit later in the video. So, how I acquired this action figure, I actually didn't get her until seven, several years later. Uh, I think it was around 2017 or 18 when I finally got her. I did get her on eBay for a decent price. Uh, fortunately, throughout the year, she hasn't been the most expensive action figure. Uh, usually in the like $25 to $35 range, which, yes, that's a little bit more pricey compared to what she was at the time, but it's in the realm of possibility. Uh, I do recall her being a peg warmer, actually, back in 2009 and 10, at least in my area, that is. I mean, it seemed like every time I went to the store, I found her on store shelves quite frequently. Uh, but at that time, I wasn't really interested in owning her in my collection. Uh, but now I do, finally do have her for, what, seven or eight years now at this point? In about six or seven years at the time of this video and I'm very pleased to have her. Uh, a little bit about her background so Sassa Lee is I'm trying to think where her species is. Talothian I think it is. I think the planet they're from is uh, Talothia and uh, she does have a cousin here. You may have recognized her cousin in the Phantom Menace and in the Clone Wars series Adigalia here. And this is the only action figure of her that we've gotten. Uh, so what happens is, of course, we know that uh, De Gallia, whether you follow the Disney canon or the Expanding Universe, she does end up being taken out by Savage Press. And then uh, shortly after that, her cousin here, Stasa Lee, was appointed to take her Jedi Council spot. And Nastasa Lee here does show up in Attack of Clones in a couple scenes. I'm trying to think which ones it was. But I know she shows up every now and then. And then, uh, of course, in Revenge of Sith, we know that she ends up perishing during Order 66 on Sao Kamai at the hands of Commander Nao, who I do have reviewed on the channel as well. This action figure right here. And she's in that particular scene on the speeder bike there. There is another Stassa Lee action figure that's uh, in a city pose on a speeder bike. Uh, but of course this is the definitive version of her that's super articulated. And even to today's standards I think she holds up really well. Uh, Stassa Lee is brought up a couple more times. She's actually uh, referenced in the Force Unleashed game when Starkiller goes to confront Kaz and Paratus. And he's making like that junk diorama of the Jedi Council. Apparently there's a like a junk statue of Stasley in there. So that's an interesting reference. Uh, as far as Jedi goes, I think she's one of the more interesting ones. Um, oftentimes I go back and read more about her character in the Expanded Universe and I think she has an interesting story written for her. Uh, same for her cousin here, uh, D. Galia, who we, I think she, we only really see her in the Phantom Menace, and I don't think she showed up in Tech of Clones. Of course, she was in the Clone Wars series, like I mentioned, but she wasn't too prevalent in the movies. Uh, so, two very interesting characters. Would recommend reading more about them if you haven't done so already. Uh, D. Gallia here, I will do in a separate video at some point, but for today, we'll just take a look at Stassa Lee. So the head sculpt itself, I think, is pretty good. Uh, the paint is not 100%. I think the eyes could have been a little bit more clean, a little crisper. Uh, but it's not too bad. And it might be my sample. I did pick this up loose. So for her headdress here, very interesting uh, detail of colors in here. It has like a combination of blues and grays and whites in here. A little bit of tans, I suppose. Of course, with the base of the headdress, there you have some brown detailing and then like a symbol of some sort. 
Well, that's pretty interesting. Of course, her cousin has a, a similar one, not exactly the same, though. Uh, the eyes, it almost looks like they wanted to paint some extra big eyelashes on her, as you can see. I'm not sure if that's just um, some type of blotch on my sample, or if that's a thing they were going for, but I have a feeling that's what Hasbro was going for. It's an interesting detailing in her eyeshadow there, or her eyelashes. As for the rest of the figure here, she has a uh, pretty standard Jedi robes, I suppose. Just all brown in color, different shades of it, a little bit of white here and there. I think this would have been a great base to make for many uh, female Jedi action figures, which I'm trying to think if there was any. I'm sure there was. This is too good of a uh, tooling to just let go to waste. Uh, she does have a hole there on her belt where you put a lightsaber hilt, but unfortunately she did not come with one, so you can't uh, really utilize that. Of course, if you have some spares lying around, you can do that. And we'll just take this robe off for a second. Uh, I will mention that the robe doesn't seem like it's too oversized for her. And the hood does fit pretty good over her head. Of course, you can keep it tucked away if you want. You just put it behind her headdress. No problems there. There's a pouch on her belt there. Uh, so one interesting detail that I was referencing to towards the beginning of the video here that we don't see too often on Star Wars action figures unless it's very specific to their character is they actually did up her nails here uh, like a green nail polish of some sort or maybe that's the natural nail color of her species I'm not sure but that's an interesting detail that we don't see uh, that silver on there is from the lightsaber blade See, there's a little bit of that silver from the blade there. Off. It was like that when I got this. It's not the end of the world. Uh, but that's interesting that Hasbro went to all that detail to do this. They rarely do that with action figures, especially uh, Jedi and Sith and characters like that. Usually it's just straight paint. So well, that was nice of them to uh, do that detail. Uh, as for her skirt here, it looks like it's kind of draped off to the side here. Of course, her legs look very similar to uh, Jaina Solo ones that will be used later. I'm not sure if the same exact ones, uh, but they're pretty close if they're not. So in terms of the, her articulation, she is super articulated, so she has a ball joint the neck, and despite her headdress there, she has a pretty good range of motion with it, and she can even look down ever so slightly, and even look up somewhat, and has a good side-to-side -side rotation as well. Uh, she does have hinged shoulders and hinged elbows, which look like they go past 90 degrees a little bit. Uh, and then swivel wrists, and then swivel waist, and then, uh, swivel hips, and then hinge knees, and hinge ankles as well. So solid articulation all around. In terms of weapons and accessories, she's pretty light. Uh, this lightsaber here looks very familiar. I think this might be one that comes with General Grievous, actually. Or at least it looks like a similar hilt. Kind of a smaller hilt. And it is unique. Uh, she does have a little bit of a goldish color at the end there. So that's something unique. So like I mentioned, it is worn a little bit. It's not too bad. And thankfully the 
green and uh, silver paint here kind of blends in with one another to where you don't really see it. So that is a unique hill. Uh, like I said, it might come with General Grievous, but I'm pretty sure if this is the same hilt that I'm thinking of, it does not have the gold paint at the end. And of course, our robe here, which I showed off already. Pretty standard robe. Uh, thankfully, it does fit on her pretty good, though. So just put this on real quick. Then, of course, she is a build a droid action figure, and I do have the completed droid that she helps build. This is uh, the future Death Star droid that we see in the TBC line. This is the uh, original build a droid figure of him, which is not quite as uh, shiny as that one. Uh, but the part she comes with specifically is the left arm here, I think. At the time, this was probably one of the easiest droids that you can build. It seemed like every action figure, especially the peg warmers, had parts for this guy. Uh, even I was able to complete him. You know, at the time, it was kind of hit or miss as to exactly which action figures I got. But I did manage to complete all the parts. At some time, at some time I'll do his own video. Maybe like a wave overview. And yeah, this is specifically the left arm that she comes with. Uh, the rest of the action figures are like Commander Faye, General Grievous, Bail Organa, and Brianna Organa. And I think those are the five action figures. And there must be a sixth one in there. I think FX6 actually, or the 327 Star Corps. And she does hold the lightsaber well in her hand. Uh, it's a little loose, but it stays in the place. I haven't had any real problems with it. Uh, but other than that, I think that's pretty much all I can tell you about Stassa Lee here. A more side-by-side -side look at her cousin here. So, would I recommend her for your collection? I totally would. I think uh, if you're a fan of Jedi, she's an essential one to add to the collection. Uh, and even if you're not the biggest Jedi fan, if you're just kind of casual about it or occasional... I still think she's a great addition to collection. Um, like I said, I have enjoyed reading about her character in the Expanded Universe. Uh, she doesn't have the most detailed story in the world, but what little she has is pretty interesting. And I think it's uh, interesting as well seeing the dynamic between her and her cousin here. And of course, uh, Di Gallia was on the Jedi Council and then she was replaced by her cousin. And they're both from the, as I mentioned, the planet Dilathia, I think it's called. Not a planet you hear about too often in Star Wars. But yeah, solid action figure all around. One of the, my personal favorite Jedi I have in my collection. And uh, as far as price is concerned, she's medium, I would say. Uh, if you really want her, I think she's definitely in the realm of possibility to be able to get for a decent price. So yeah. Solid action figure all around. I give her a 10 out of 10. And I think she's one that you need for your collection. One of the best out of the Legacy collection. But anyways, that concludes this review. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for plenty more reviews in the future. There will always be more to come. And if you haven't already, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. I would appreciate all your support. And check out some links in the description if you haven't done so already. As always, thanks for watching.